There are new documents. We're going to make them public tonight. They come from a great FOIA litigation that was brought by Citizens United, and they really show how the Biden administration, the Homeland Security Department, tried to cover up the fact that they had a censorship operation going called the disinformation Government Disinformation Office. A really insightful look at how the bureaucracy works, oftentimes without the political um, knowledge of their leaders. It's a, an amazing set of documents. I was so surprised by them. I want to bring in the man who made the lawsuit possible, who sprung these documents for the American people. He's the head of Citizens United and my good friend, Dave Bossy. Dave, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me back, John. Appreciate it. I have said this many times over 30, 40 years. Uh, you are a champion of transparency and you continue to deliver for the American people through Citizens United. Uh, unbelievable stories. We all know the story of the government disinformation office. We didn't know of the effort to uh, keep it quiet until these documents came out. Tell us what struck you when you got these documents from the court recently. Well, John, as you well know, it takes a great team here at Citizens United to get it, led by JT Masternati, who's been doing this yeah. with you and with me for a very long time. His dedication is what really makes this stuff possible. So uh, it, it, it's a um, it, what they did is they put this this woman who was who was making claims that Hunter Biden's laptop isn't real. Right. OK, so spreading disinformation in charge of the disinformation board. And then she gets upset when the mainstream media wants to call her out and the American people realize what's going on because the American people don't believe in government censorship. They don't believe, they don't want government to have power over our speech and our activities. Yeah. It's, it's extraordinary. And of course, our founding fathers didn't want it either. That's why they created the First Amendment as a free speech amendment. And yet here they are in the middle of this. And when they're, they're getting caught, I, what you see in these documents is they, they're finally getting caught. Now they don't want this story to come out. They talk about things like a hostile news network, which I assume they mean is a news, news network willing to report the truth. Uh, tell us about the cover up. Sometimes the cover up's even more interesting than the original controversy. Exactly. It always is. You see these folks, you know, in these internal memos, emails, talking about how nervous they are, saying, oh, my goodness, you know, I, I expected some blowback, but I didn't expect this type uh, or this level of blowback. Let me just say uh, this is this just just to just right now this week, we are seeing the story break about the IRS sending jackbooted thugs to Matt Taibbi's house at the very moment he is a witness about government power and the, what the government is doing about creating disinformation by, by stifling speech on Facebook and on Twitter. And Matt Taibbi, who he and others have been such courageous journalists on this, and the IRS show, just miraculously shows up at the very moment yeah he's in washington dc testifying before congress it, it it's exactly what the american people don't want it's what what the american people hate in essence which is uh, a government power and abuse of that power yeah uh, it's it's stunning that they would do that on the same day uh, the hubris of it all uh, but but that just shows you what unmitigated power is about, right? And that's what the Biden administration and the progressives on the left now, that's all they're about is power for power's sake. And, and these uh, bureaucracies, which uh, seem to live and thrive without any real political leadership, it doesn't matter who's in control. These, these bureaucracies have their own agenda and they will follow it regardless of the will of the American people. When we first heard the story of the government disinformation office, we told, hey, there's nothing wrong with this. This is a righteous effort. But when you read these documents that you've been able to surface, you and JT, you get a sense of, well, if there was nothing wrong with it, why were they so intent on trying to hide it and cover it up and spin it away? Uh, the bureaucrats get caught in their own lies in this disinformation office, don't they? Well, they certainly do. And I, and I just urge people to, to, when your story comes out, you know, put it go to the documents, read it yourself. You will see what uh, really what bad intentions by uh, by left wing activists posing as as do gooders. These are left wing activists posing 
as folks who are saying they want to get rid of disinformation, which some people go, oh, wow, that's interesting. That might that's good. We need to do that. Right. Like if they don't know any better. And these people are the furthest thing from what should be close to power. Yeah. There is a, uh, Amber Athey has a new book out that is really fascinating talking about how journalism got yanked to the left by a new generation of people coming out of colleges that were indoctrinated. And I think the same is true in government. You see all these new people have come into government and they took institutions that sort of had a charter to be neutral, right? To treat Republicans and Democrats and independents same. And they suddenly pull everything to the left in a very jolting way. And I, I think the American experience feels very different today than it did even 10 years ago. The idea that ideology has tilted neutral institutions to a clear leftward bent, how do we begin to put that toothpaste back in the tube? How do we fight back and get control of not only journalism institutions, more importantly, our government institutions? It's our civil society, right, John? I mean, it's every aspect of what you, you just really put it in a nutshell as to the big problems that we have uh, in America today. It, this, is a, this is a major uh, undertaking. I don't know how to solve it. Uh, the, this, this is going to take a lot of years and a lot of people um, with great vision uh, and, 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 and really some policy changes. And, and, and look, I got to tell you, I'm a fighter. I, I've been a fighter my whole career. But the violence and I say fighter like I'm a fighter politically, yeah. not 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 uh, not somebody who's, you know, in the streets violently. You see the violence that is out there that yeah. is just simmering below the surface and some days popping up above the surface. And so we have to do everything we can as Americans to 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 try to move past this period. Uh, I don't know the answers. I, I hope we can. I hope we can all come together as a, as a nation because we, this is our country is teetering right now. And we have enemies. We have real enemies in North Korea and we have real enemies in Iran and China and Russia. And and we can't be doing this to ourselves if we're going to if we're going to survive as a nation.